Uh, this is the April 30th, 2015 uh, hearing of the Board of Appeals. This is the 745 hearing. <clears throat> this is on an application uh, dated March 13, 2015 uh, by Philip Joe Henning, who resides at 23 Parkwood Drive in Milton. Uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Henning is appealing a decision of the Milton Building Commissioner, actually two decisions of February 27th, 2015 and March 2nd, 2015. Uh, in which decisions uh, the Milton Building Inspector advised Mr. Joe Henning that he would not be seeking an enforcement action against Thayer Nursery. Uh, Thayer Nursery property is located at 270 Hill Side Street in Milton. Uh, the applicant is contending uh, in this particular application that Thayer Nursery is not adhering to a Board of Appeals decision in case number 2398 and that Thayer Nursery is storing and selling more firewood than allowed by the Board of Appeals decision and the applicant is contending that there are too many commercial vehicles stored at the Thayer Nursery site in violation of a decision of the Board of Appeals in, again, uh, 2398. Um, and I believe also the applicant is contending that, the, uh, that there are uh, flows of water from the uh, nursery site uh, still flowing onto their uh, residential property. <coughs> Um, the applicant is aggrieved by his inability to obtain an enforcement order from the building commissioner, and he is bringing this particular appeal. My name is John Leonard. I'm chairman of the Board of Appeals. Uh, with me this evening to my immediate left is board member uh, Virginia Donahue King, and to my immediate right is board member Emmanuel Alves. The rules of the board are going to be just as they were for the first hearing. We'll hear from the uh, applicant, Mr. Joe Henning, and Mr. Rowe is here with him. Um, we'll uh, then... Uh, Hear from anybody who has questions of Mr. Uh, Joe Henning and Mr. Rowe. Uh, we'll hear from people who wish to speak in support of this enforcement order. And we'll hear from anybody who wants to speak in opposition to this enforcement order. We're tape recording the proceedings uh, as always. So that would ask that before anyone speaks, uh, tell us your name and address, speak up nice and clear, clear and uh, loud <coughs> so that we'll have an accurate uh, uh, record if we have to revert to the tape recording in order to appear a written decision. So for, the, uh, uh, for this hearing, we'll have as evidence, in addition to anything the applicants want to submit, we have the March 13, 2015 uh, uh, ap appeal by Mr. Joe Henning. Um, we have a series of uh, email correspondences by and between uh, <clears throat> Mr. Joe Henning and the building inspector uh, dealing with the issues that are uh, uh, involved in this application. So that uh, without further ado, Mr. Joe Henning, welcome back to the, uh, to the Board of Appeals. We're delighted to hear from you. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Uh, I am Phil Joe Henning, 23 Parkwood Drive. Uh, the first um, issue we wanted to talk about was um, Mr. Prondack's decision. Sure. Let me just say one thing that I neglected to do, and excuse me for that. Um, the uh, attorney for the petition is uh, uh, Philip Joe Henning and Mr. Rowe. Uh, Matthew Dunn of Berluti, McLaughlin, and Cutchen, LLP at 44 School Street in Boston did file a, a memorandum in support of Mr. Joe Henning's uh, application for zoning enforcement decision, uh, which we have uh, filed with the records and we've all had an opportunity to read that memorandum. The floor is yours. So uh, no one is lacking a copy? That, that's okay. true. Um, Maggie, do you have a copy? Um, we asked Mr. Prondack, um, because there was a lot of noise um, over at Thayer Nursery, if he could inspect, um, and we asked him to be sure uh, and inspect on a, on a Friday. We had the feeling that there was uh, wood delivered on Friday uh, uh, by, the, by the vendor, the kiln firewood vendor and that it was delivered all through the weekend and that by Monday um, it would be gone. Uh, so uh, Joe came and inspected the barn and he, f he told me that he found three cords of wood inside the barn. Now, you recall that the um, order that the, the board made uh, in, the, in the spring of, I think, 2014 was that the business should be cash and carry and that there should be no more wood at the in the barn than would be required by a cash and carry business. Now, uh, one cord of wood is four feet by four feet 
by eight feet. That's a lot of wood. Um, and so we're talking about three uh, cords of wood. And so, um, you know, my feeling was that I, I disagreed with the building inspector and that, in fact, that was not cash and carry. And uh, I'm sorry, I only have one set of photographs, but what I want to show you is Eagle Farm. And uh, I consider Eagle Farm to be a true cash and carry business. And that's the way Eagle Farm looks. And it's not even close to three cords of wood. And so uh, I, you know, my, my feeling is that if um, Thayer Nursery was operating cash and carry, that's the way it would look and there would not be three cords of wood. Um, and, and so uh, that's basically the, the core of what I, I want to say about firewood. I believe that with three cords of wood in the barn, they are not in compliance. And my feeling is uh, when I was shoveling snow off the roof, I, I felt like uh, I was observing activity that indicated to me that um, the business was uh, pretty much the same as it had always been. Um, and the noise that was emanating from the property uh, over many weekends in the winter uh, and in the fall um, indicated to me that uh, nothing had changed from the time prior to the, uh, the uh, board's ruling uh, in, the, in the spring of 2014. One of the things that uh, occurred um, as part of the um, application uh, for the special permit with the planning board was that uh, the, the nursery was required to establish a 2012 baseline. And as part of that 2012 baseline, they, com they, uh, they stated that the 2012 baseline for firewood was 1,000 cords of wood per season. Uh, that is, um, a cord of wood is about $650 to $700 per cord. So um, at the low end, uh, we're talking $650,000 to $700,000. And if you sell less than a cord, the price goes up, of course. So uh, I, th I think we're talking anywhere from 600000 to a $1 million in, in firewood alone. So uh, what is my point? My point is that um, we have a history of noncompliance. This business was supposed to be accessory to the nursery, yet we're talking about a volume of wood in 2012 of 1,000 cords being delivered in 18-wheel uh, in, uh, uh, trucks, inbound and then uh, in dump trucks outbound. Some people come and pick it up, but uh, a lot of it is delivered by, uh, by uh, dump trucks. So we have a tremendous amount of activity going on over there related to firewood. And, and that was the point of us coming before the board uh, in, in, in late uh, 2013 and in 2014, <coughs> early 2014. And we were granted relief, we thought. Um, and and uh, the, the relief was that the business was supposed to be cash and carry. And I, I don't agree with Mr. Prondack's uh, decision. Do you have something to say, John? Yeah, on <clears throat> John Rowe, uh, 23 Parkwood Drive. Just, I wanted to make a point that um, I think it was towards the end of February, um, we were up on our roof. Um, uh, shoveling snow. Uh, many people were probably on their roof I shoveling snow. I should have hired snow. you. I had to hire a contractor well. <laughs> to go up to my roof and I wasn't living in the house at the time. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, we have a bird's eye view up on the roof of Thayer Nursery and on that, this was a Saturday, you know, I witnessed, um, we, we could hear them loading dump trucks in the wood warehouse um, and I witnessed two loads of kiln dried firewood leave uh, leave the uh, wood warehouse uh, for deliveries on that day, and this was a Saturday in, in February. Um, I don't recall the exact date, um, uh, but we were on the roof, and we had a very good view, and um, believe me, from uh, my backyard, you can hear, you can hear this activity. Um, it's very loud, uh, front-end loaders, Taking wood and dumping it into the bed of a uh, uh, of a of a of a dump truck. 
Was the front end loader inside the barn? Yes, they load the trucks inside the barn. Um, but of course you can hear that. And then I witnessed the trucks leave. And what they do is when the truck leaves the barn, the guy in the t driving the truck gets out and puts a tarp over the top of the wood. So, and this is what I witnessed um, uh, two times while I hap just happened to be up on my roof on a Saturday afternoon. I know you were on your roof, <clears throat> and I know there were terrible conditions that you were subject to. <laughs> and I know you didn't have the ability to run down the, the ladder and jump in your automobile and, and follow the trucks. Um, or, or uh, photograph the trucks while you were trying to clear snow off. Um, but since February, have you, have you seen any such similar activity taking place at the nursery? Or was, or was that the only occurrence that you saw? Um, I don't recall. Because I, I remember yeah. in one of our earlier hearings, and we've had a few hearings uh, on, on this matter, <clears throat> um, either you or your associates or... Uh, uh, people that you have hired were, were uh, uh, pretty good detectives in following trucks and photographing activity for the benefit of the board. Well, I'm not criticizing you or holding that against you. <clears throat> but um, So that February experience is the only one that you've... Well, I have photographs <clears throat> um, uh, of wood, of dump trucks full of wood leaving the property. Um, that we presented in the last uh, 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 hearing, which was, was it, Mary, do you know when that was? Was it 2012? No, no, it was just a few months ago. Um, I don't think I sat on no, that hearing, weren't. that's why. You, I yeah, you weren't here. Um, so we do have pictures of dump trucks with wood in them, um, but uh, it was difficult. They're taken from far away, and it's difficult to, you know, determine you know, what exactly is in the truck. You know, there's a tarp covering it sure. over, so. Nevertheless, at the <clears throat> hearing, uh, Maggie herself stated that uh, the truck was, uh, I, as I recall, was most likely um, repositioning wood to Canton uh, <clears throat> that, you know, they uh, try to balance the levels uh, back and forth. Um, but I, I believe <clears throat> Mr. Hurley at that time said but that can't happen. It, you know, you can't have that much wood in Milton that you would have wood to take to Canton. In a the, dump truck. In a dump truck. <laughs> so, um, you know, because Mr. Hurley said it couldn't happen, I guess he thought it didn't happen, but it did. Uh, and, and Maggie herself said that they were repositioning the wood to Canton. Okay. Um, but at any rate, uh, that, that, that was a former hearing. Um, the other thing uh, that uh, we wanted to talk about was that um, we have uh, attached um, Judge Sand's ruling um, in Coulter versus uh, uh, the Board of Appeals, et cetera, et cetera. And if you need a copy of it, I, I have it. Yeah. But no, we have it. It's supply. supply. But in that, um, in that, uh, in that decision, um, the judge says that. You know, uh, in the town of Milton, you cannot permit or uh, uh, under our zoning bylaws, you cannot permit uh, more than one commercial vehicle, which is garaged on a site in a residence A or residence AA district. And that um, you can't permit more. Like in 1987, the uh, ZBA uh, special permit uh, permitted uh, uh, Thayer to maintain five dump trucks or up to five dump trucks uh, on the property. And Judge Sand's ruling was that uh, you could not do that by special permit. His decision was that it would require a zoning variance to um, have, m to allow more than one commercial vehicle, which is garaged. And it is my understanding that, um, you know, there is no such zoning variance in effect. And um, what I have is a, a number of pictures um, at Thayer Nursery. And, and one of them uh, pertains to the organic lawn van. And it was our understanding that the organic lawn van was not, uh, was uh, assumed to be 
part of the landscaping business and was not supposed to be on the property. And I talked to Mr. Prondek about that, and he told me, oh, it's not used for um, that business. It's used uh, to pick up flowers and plants. And um, the organic lawn program uh, sticker on the van um, was advertising. And I guess my thought is that um, I beg to differ. If it says organic lawn van, that's what it is. Um, and, and my thought is that, uh, you know, it can, I have a number of uh, vehicles in the photographs, and my contention is that um, they're only allowed one, um, and unless they get a zoning variance. You can take a look at the pictures. Some of them. Thank you. These pictures. Um, you have to talk on the mic, Mr. Rowe. The pictures uh, are dated in April of this year. There are pictures that are dated um, in December of 2014. There are pictures um, that are dated in August of 2014, all of which uh, demonstrate that the dump trucks and equipment related to the landscape construction company are still housed or parked um, on the Thayer property at 270 Hillside Street. So these are our vehicles that, you know, per your order in September of 2013 um, were supposed to be removed from the property um, as they are related to the landscape construction business. I don't think the excavator, that we have pictures of the excavator parked in the same place it was in uh, August of 2014. It's still parked there now, um, April of 2015, in the same spot. It doesn't have anything to do with the nursery. It has something, it, it's used in their landscaping business. The same with um, the organic lawn van. Um, that has, you know, never left the pre premises. And um, we believe that uh, this is forbidden uh, based on your cease and desist rule. I think additionally what I would say about the pictures is that, you know, um, we always have this bugaboo where uh, the, the, the problem is that people say, oh, it, it's for the nursery. But you'll, you'll observe that in some of the pictures um, there's snow on the ground. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I wonder exactly what you do at the nursery when there's snow on the ground with a dump truck. Um, so I, I'm just not sure uh, that the reason the reasoning holds true necessarily. I think that perhaps the dump trucks are delivering firewood. Um, that's my thought, and that's what we have observed. Uh, another thing that I, I um, wanted to talk about, and, and what this gets to is the lack of rigorous enforcement of the zoning bylaws. Um, I have mentioned to Mr. Prondack before that our zoning bylaws permit only one commercial vehicle on a lot in a residence A or residence AA district. And uh, I, I have read um, Judge uh, uh, Sand's decision before. And, um, you know, uh, nevertheless, um, nothing seems to change. Um, I think that, uh, you know, when he goes to the barn and he sees three cords of wood and it's supposed to be cash and carry, you know, he's not being meticulous. He's not being rigorous in his enforcement. And I guess I'd, I'd like to um, show some other pictures related to Judge Davis's um, cease and desist order. Um, Judge Davis, you all have copies of Judge Davis's uh, cease and desist? I, I don't in these papers to the okay, best of my I, knowledge. I'll give you my copy. <clears throat> But uh, it's a, uh, Judge Wilson said that bulk storage and sales of loam, mulch, stone dust, sand, gravel, wood, uh, wood chips, and other similar products must also cease, except that these products may be sold at a retail level in bags, and that use and storage of these products, as they are necessary for the maintenance of the nursery stock, is permissible. Now, um, this pile of stone and uh, John will bring the picture around, has been right off Forest Street for, I would say, since 
uh, late, um, late summer. This um, picture of that same pile of stone and this pile of dirt or mulch, I don't know what it is, has also been located right off of um, Forest Street. It is visible from Forest Street. Um, and, and in accordance with Judge Wilson's order, there should be no piles of this stuff. And, and if it's used for the nursery, um, use it. Is it on the nursery grounds or yes. is it off? It's, it's on, on the grounds. It's on. Okay. Uh, one second. And this uh, is a this is a, um, a a pile of tables, etc. I, I think you may recall, Mr. Leonard, that um, in the 1967 and the 1987 uh, uh, special permits, um, the the nursery was required to um, keep their facility in neat in in a neat and orderly fashion. And this um, stack of tables and uh, pallets and things like that, things of that nature, is uh, visible from Pam Lapore's house at 44 Forest Street. So I guess I would say that um, this is another example of noncompliance. And all of these have been at the same location as in the photographs um, the last two or three times that Mr. Prondack has visited um, the, the nursery. And, and I believe that Mr. Prondack should be aware, if he is not aware, of Judge Wilson's cease and desist order. So I, I guess I would say, sure, I, I would say that, you know, it's just not rigorous enforcement. Do you have anything else you'd like to add in support of your application? Um, I have a number of <coughs> pictures um, go about what is going on right now with respect to uh, mulch. Um, again, should I speak to these? Sure, if you want. Okay. Go ahead, John. You need to look at the page. Right. One of the important things, though, uh, I'll I'll just say before John speaks is that you know um, perhaps people will say that it's for the nursery. But the last three photographs that I have are the corner of um, Hillside and Forest, where there are a lot of trees that, I, I, that are sold by Thayer to the public. And if you look at them carefully, you'll notice there's no mulch around these trees. And so if this um, mulch is being, sold, or is being used at the nursery, these, there's been no mulch around these trees for the entire winter that I have observed. Go ahead, John, please. So uh, Saturday, April 18th, um, I heard a uh, tractor trailer truck. I was um, uh, in my home with the windows closed. Um, and you can hear the tractor trailer trucks making deliveries um, at their nursery. Um, the vibration from the truck as well as the beeping of the backup. So I went out and looked and um, sure enough there's a tractor trailer truck delivering mulch. So I have pictures of the tractor trailer truck uh, delivering mulch um, at 9 o'clock in the morning, um, as well as um, uh, later in that morning after coming home from running errands, I just fortuitously drove by and witnessed the, um, uh, the front end loader, the Bobcat, a Bobcat front end <coughs> loader loading up a Driscoll landscaping dump truck with mulch. So this is um, forbidden on your cease and desist as well as um, uh, Judge Wilson's cease and desist that they are not allowed to, di you know, to distribute, <coughs> to sell mulch from the property, you know, in this volume to other landscapers. So I have these pictures. Also I have a picture of, um, it looks like a, a, a personal automobile backed up to the uh, mulch pile, loading mulch into the automobile. Um, so these are all dated. And what we have witnessed is that um, the mulch piles seem to come and go, come and go, um, you know, which leads me to believe that, you know, and if you look at the pictures, it proves that they're selling mulch in this bulk and loading it up um, into other people's dump trucks.
Again, please notice that the last photographs uh, are of the nursery and there's no mulch around the trees. Okay, <clears throat> why don't you continue? All right. Um, <clears throat> Finally. Oh, can I ask you one question sure. on the issue of the uh, the mulch and uh, and uh, Driscoll landscaping business? <clears throat> was this brought to Mr. Prondack's attention when he made the site visit or prior to this? No, we, we had already um, been uh, granted this hearing. Okay. So that was after. That was after. The, That's yeah, what I thought. Yeah. These are dated uh, April 19, 2015. 19 or 18? Right? Yeah, 18 and 19. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yes. Why don't you continue, Mr. Jett? All right. Uh, finally, uh, well, I, I guess, you know, continuing on with the same theme of lack of enforcement and of, um, again, it, it's not only lack of enforcement, it's lack of compliance. And uh, this is an example of good enforcement but extreme lack of compliance where I have a photograph of um, a sign that says Artisan's Market Open. Now, you'll, uh, Mr. Prondack took care of the Artisan's Market, but you all know that this is not permitted. Um, you know, you cannot have this um, uh, shopping mall or this strip mall uh, in a Residence A or Residence AA district. You know, this is not what our neighborhood is for. All the comings and goings, the sale of um, uh, crafts, the sale of furniture, the sale of, it's just, and, and what it points to is that um, Thayer Nursery has made no effort to uh, comply. Basically, they do what they want to do, um, and, and the neighbors suffer the consequences, um, and this isn't right, and uh, sooner or later, uh, a stop has to be put to this, or what will we have next? Um, you know, I, I think it would be clear that things like stone, stone Soup Sunday, Artisan's Markets, things like that are, are not uh, permitted in our neighborhood. If you want to. Since the very beginning of the hearings, um, we've talked about the problem of lighting and, uh, uh, you know, I think in the special permits that were originally um, uh, issued, there were very conservative um, guidelines with respect to exterior lighting. And uh, I, I know that uh, Josh has said in the planning board hearings that uh, it's necessary for security. I guess my thought is that if there's a security problem at Thayer Nursery, then they need to have intrusion alarms. But lighting is not the solution uh, to the problem. And what I have here are a number of lights uh, uh, on the property that shine into my yard perennially and uh, and this is another example of, um, you know, failure to comply with the, uh, with the uh, special permits that were issued in 1967 and 1987. The last thing I'd like to uh, talk about before I wrap up is the flooding. Um, the, as, as part of their application for the special permit, um, Thayer Nursery dug a trench um, along its southern property line, along Pam Lepore's property line. And it pretty much goes the entire length from almost to Forest Street to um, well behind the uh, barn where they store firewood. And the idea of the trench was supposed to be that it would capture uh, rainwater or groundwater that would flow from the, um, from the Blue Hills down to Thayer Nursery. It was an effort, I guess, on their part to try to um, manage stormwater. But um, if you look at Pam Lepore's property, 
Pam Lepore's property is actually lower than, um, than Thayer Nursery. And if you look carefully at her property, it's actually very wet um, because the, the water does not flow to Thayer. It stays on her property. So, you know, this, this uh, trench was supposed to lead to a cistern. I'll call it a cistern. I don't know what technically they call it. But um, the rainwater was supposed to flow into the ditch <coughs> and down toward my property line where it would go, uh, and I'm on the eastern side of, of there, where it would go into a cistern and then leach into the ground, let's say. But um, what actually happened was, if you, if you look at the trench, it isn't, it isn't in compliance with the map. It actually goes beyond the terminus that was envisioned on the map. And, and additionally, um, the cistern was never installed. So what does this mean for me? What it means for me and for my neighbors, the Coles, is that our yards are constantly flooded because all of the rainwater captured by the ditch is actually directed to our properties because we're downhill from their nursery. So what this does, this trench, is it leads to a, an, uh, an enormous concentration of the moisture of the water and it directs it directly at, um, at our property. And what it's caused has been tremendous flooding in our basement, uh, tremendous flooding in our yard. Uh, we actually have a, a red maple that was planted by Maggie's father uh, and it's, it's definitely on its last legs because the ground never dries out. In fact, uh, like our, our lawnmower uh, uh, sinks into the, into the mud every time we try to um, mow the lawn. And uh, what happened, uh, we have lost two uh, mature maple trees uh, in our backyard. Um, obviously, they could grow. Um, they grew to uh, a large size, and then suddenly they died. Um, and I attribute that to water because they both died in the same year. Um, but what I'd like you to, to do is look at the pictures of the ditch that um, Thayer made, and then uh, the uh, pictures attached that show the collection of rainwater on our property and on the Coles property. And I, I would venture to say that, you know, in my mind, I'm not accusing anyone of anything, but I, in my mind, this is retribu retribution, and I think it's wrong and unfair. You know, when, uh, when there's a normal rainstorm, uh, what we end up doing is going into the basement, getting out our shop vac, and vacuuming, vacuuming up all the water, carrying it up the steps, and uh, dumping it in the street. You know, uh, this is not uh, normal activity for people in Milton, uh, but that's what we do. Um, and I, I think it's unfair <coughs> and wrong of the people who made the ditch without making the cistern. And I, I also wonder uh, where, where did this design come from? Because what we worry about is that even if the cistern is, is installed, what will end up happening is that we'll end up with springs in our backyard um, when, the, when the water from the cistern leaches into the ground. Um, so I, I'm not sure that a professional uh, designed this. I'm not sure uh, who decided not to put in the cistern once they put in the ditch. But um, this is a serious water problem for us at the moment. Could I ask you a question? Sure. And, and my question is this. Where you have this water problem and you contended you've had it for years as a result of Thayer's activities. Um, and I think you showed it's us. It's worse now. And, and you showed us your backyard. It's much worse now. I, I have two things to say. The first one is going to get you upset. But the, the flooding, I just looked at the petition, your particular petition and Mr. Dunn's uh, memorandum, really doesn't relate to that. And, and you've mentioned a, a lot of things. We like to let people... Uh, tell us what the real thoughts are. But the lighting isn't mentioned in this particular. So legally speaking, all we're really talking about here um, is the sale of firewood in the commercial vehicles. That's fine. But, but what, I'm, what I'm trying to say, though, is that 
we have a whole array of problems. No, and you've said, you've said it eloquently. My, but my question is this. We have, you have all these issues which relate to the operation of FAIA. What they're doing, what they're not doing, is it permissible? What did this decision say? What did that? <clears throat> and it all get, and, and we have a whole series of decisions over a long period of time, uh, and, and we have no judicial uh, adjudications dealing with your particular case. We have Judge Sand's opinion, but it's my memory, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, <clears throat> that Judge Sand's opinion is the subject of an appeal. So it's not a final judgment. I understand that Mr. Coulter has appealed that. I, I could be wrong, but that's my understanding. It's <clears throat> not my understanding, okay. but uh, because uh, you know that Matt Dunn is, is my attorney uh, as well. Matt Dunn is uh, involved in the uh, Coulter case. Uh, Matt Dunn has not mentioned to me uh, but I'll be sure and ask him tomorrow. No, it would be interesting. And I'll let you know. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to know that. But, but what I was trying to say, and I'll try, I'll try to be more specific, where this issue is really very discreet, and it doesn't involve nuances as to whether the, the mulch is too much or whether the wood is too much or the, uh, <clears throat> the piles of stone are staying there forever, that type of thing, dealing with the activities of the nursery which everyone has been debating for years, where this is a clear and distinct legal issue <clears throat> dealing with uh, flooding conditions on your property, caused, yeah, according to you, caused by Thea Nursery in this trench. Okay? <clears throat> why, and I'm not being critical, why haven't, haven't you brought a separate legal action Regarding, regarding just the flooding aspect of this, which is nice and clear and, and discreet and distinct? So what, when did you file it, and why hasn't it been decided by the Superior Court or wherever? Maggie was deposed today. Oh. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, the timing is moving along. Uh, of course, uh, everybody delays and delays and delays as much as possible to, um, you know, uh, I don't know, but that, that's keep a, things from being decided. That's a fact pattern what I that, can get be, to, that can be quickly sure, and easily sure, decided. Sure. What, what I'm trying to get to is that um, it is time now to revoke special permits. The suffering that has been caused is enough. You know, uh, we cannot play this game any longer. But aren't you asking us to revoke a, a special permit based upon a lot of other facts which are not presently subject to this board's jurisdiction on this matter? The board, can, uh, uh, the board can actually revoke a special permit at any time at its discretion. And uh, I think now is the time uh, because I, I think that uh, there have just been uh, too many problems. The, the, the granting of the special permit the most important thing, and the thing that is uh, distributed well through the 1967 and the 1987 uh, uh, decisions, is that it is required of the board to ensure that when the special permit is granted, that the, um, the activities that are permitted in the special permit are completely consistent with the underlying uh, zoning bylaw and I will grant you, or I will state at this moment, that we have gone beyond that. That these activities that are going on constantly are not consistent with the protections of the, uh, of the zoning bylaws for Residence A and Residence AA district. We've got trucks. We've got 18 <coughs> wheelers. We've got water. We've got noise, we've got vibration, we've got dust, and you know all about it because you've been to 99.9% .9 of the hearings. You know, it, it's come to the time when, you know, I, I believe that Thayer Nursery always knew that they were in a residential district. The, the first thing they did in 1967 was to apply for a special permit, and the permit was granted with, uh, and I, I think the board showed great wisdom in the early granting of the decision. But, you know, uh, as time has gone by, the business has evolved, and I think it has outgrown its home. And I think it's time to find some other place with 
four or five more bedrooms for, for Thayer uh, so that they can be tremendously successful in another place without putting this burden on neighbors who are just trying to live their lives in peace. Um, and, and, and I guess that's, that's where I'll wrap up. Okay, thank you very much. Let me see if my uh, colleagues have any questions. Mrs. King, do you have any questions of Mr. Johanning and Mr. Rowe? this time. Mr. Alves, do you have any questions? I do not. I'd like to hear from Ms. Aponda. Okay. <coughs> Excuse do you, me. Do you want this? Um, it's... Is that the restraining the, order? Yeah, from that, Judge is, Wilson. Is that your only copy, Mr. No, Johanning? no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great. Mr. Prondack, do you wish to be heard? Uh, I do. Great. Good Welcome evening. to the Board of Appeals. Uh, Joe Prondack, Building Commissioner. Um, so I, I guess I'll just uh, speak to a couple things that have been brought up, and, uh, and first the firewood. Um, I did go to Thayer Nursery. I am well aware of the um, decision by the Board that allowed a cash and carry firewood business and not a business that delivered firewood regularly from Thayer Nursery to people's homes. Um, so I, I went at the request of uh, Mr. Joe Henning on one particular Friday and, and found that there was about three cords of firewood uh, in the barn. Um, I think that is perfectly consistent with the amount that was allowed by the board. Um, and, I'll, and I'll even look at, if you look at Eagle Farms, um, Eagle Farms has some nice little stacked um, firewood uh, in front of their barn, in front of their garden shop with you know, quarter cord, eighth of a cord, couple of bundles, whatever it is. But at any given time during firewood season, Eagle Farms has 30 to 50 firewoods, 30 to 50 cords of firewood stored across the street at the uh, Pepsi plant. So they have an unlimited. Which is permissible. It's a non-conforming lot I'm and sorry, it's allowed. Let, I'm sorry, if, if I could speak, please. please. Okay. Um, so I don't think it's a good um, comparison because they can simply go across the street and bring, every time they sell a quarter cord or an eighth cord or a bundle of firewood, they can simply walk across the street or drive their front end loader across the street and replenish that stock. Um, I, I fully understood that, that the um, board wanted this business to remain cash and carry, and I believe that it has. I, I, again, I've been by Thayer Nursery many more times than probably Mr. Johanning and Mr. Rowe, or even Thayer and uh, um, Maggie and Josh are aware of. I simply have not seen the trucks going out of the um, Thayer Nursery. Um, might it be happening according to Mr. Johanning and Mr. Rowe? It is. I have not seen it, and I cannot cite them for a violation that I have not seen. Um, if, if we forget about the, that part of it for a minute, if Say a nursery were to keep one cord of firewood in the barn to service people over the weekend that may buy up to a quarter cord at a time, one-fourth of a cord, I think, was allowed. So that would mean four people came in and buy a quarter of a cord, and then that cord would be gone. Now we have to get another delivery. So you, in some respects, you're going to increase the traffic, the delivery traffic, by not having enough on hand. So. There's a balance there, and the, and, and the board was not that specific, and I think we, uh, the board even indicated that because we can't micromanage the nursery, we, 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 we can't be that specific. Um, so, and, and quite frankly, if they had six, eight, or even ten cords of firewood, I don't necessarily think that I would find that in violation, provided that it's used to service the cash and carry business. That's a lot of little stop and shop bundles. <laughs> that is a lot of, but, but the, the decision, I believe, and the discussion at the board was to allow up to a quarter of a cord at a time. That's a pickup truck full. I, I don't think I they don't said a quarter. It, they said corn. you could put it in your car. No, I'm sorry, look, so, Joe, why don't you finish? What, um, then you so in any event, uh, three cords of firewood. I don't think it's a lot of firewood. I don't think it's in violation of the, of, of the special permit. I don't think it's in violation of the spirit of the special permit. Um, as far as the um, commercial vehicles are concerned, um, and, and, and I'm going to give, for the record, I, I feel I need to give my take on the Judge Sands thing briefly. Sure. Um, the Judge Sands decision. The Judge Sands decision was on the Coulter property, not on the Thayer property. 
the Judge Sands decision was on a newly issued variance slash special permit because Coulter's special permit slash variance had expired. The nurseries special permit first granted in 1967, amended again in 1987, has never expired and never been revoked. Therefore, even if you could argue, this is my opinion, that, let me say this, I believe that, that the board recognized from day one and memorialized in the 1987 permit that trucks and bobcats and front end loaders were somewhat accessory to the operation of the nursery. In the 1987 decision, it specifically allows five trucks. Whether that's right or wrong, because the special permit is still active, there is a statute of limitations in Chapter 40A that we cannot go back and enforce something that was granted, if, even if, if it was granted in error. Actually, it's a, I believe it's a six-year statute. Um, so that, that's... That's my opinion on the commercial vehicles. As far as the, um, as far as the van is concerned, the organic lawn van, I had a conversation with Maggie. She told me that the signs on the van are for the advertisement of the organic lawn program only. And Maggie can correct me. I won't go too far in it because she may, um, or Josh may give you the exact details. But she told me that when somebody wants an organic lawn, they throw the organic lawn product onto the landscape trucks and the landscape might go and do mulch here and mulch there and oh and at this lawn they'll do organic treatment. So the van is the one that they use to go into the flower market and pick up, this is Maggie's explanation, it's not used to go out and do organic lawn treatments. So I, I told Maggie that she needs to remove the advertisements from the side of the van. And if you look at the van in full, you will see that some of them have been removed. And I asked Maggie a short time ago, why haven't they been fully removed? She said, we started to do it ourselves, but it ruined the paint. We need to have it professionally removed. So that's where we are left with that. Um, so I don't, I, uh, to sum up on that, um, I don't think the Judge Sands decision fully applies in this case. Um, and... Um, <coughs> The Judge Wilson decision um, court order was focused on the prevention of commercial landscape operation. Um, the pile of dirt that you see in the picture, the big gray pile, one of the, and I've explained this to Mr. Joe, Joe Henning, the big gray pile of what I call, what we used to call crush run, stone dust. Um, back at the rear of the property adjacent to Joe Henning Row property, was um, like a stockyard where they kept um, unpleasant stuff, for lack of a better term. They, so what they did was they changed that to a, to a, a grow out area, what, as they call it. So they took up all that stone dust and they piled it up close to Forest Ave, but still on the, on the Thayer property. And then they built that nursery area uh, that used to be kind of a, a storage area. Now they're in the process of uh, applying for a special permit. I'm, I'm quite sure that they're going to use that stone dust at some point. Um, but they're kind of in limbo because they don't have their conditions from the planning board yet. Um, there's nothing... Uh, the st I, I am certain that the stone dust is not being sold to landscapers or shipped out. I mean, obviously, by the length of time that it's been there, uh, it's not being used to service a commercial landscape business. It's, it's stockpiled. It's, I'm quite confident it's going to be used, again, it, 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 at the nursery. Um, Could I ask a question? Of course you can. Sure. Judge Davis's order said that piles of stone dust are not allowed. What part of that is unclear? Piles it doesn't say, <laughs> wait. I, I can wait, you want to answer wait, the no, question. I, no, I'm trying to finish my question, Joe. Okay. If it says not allowed, it means not allowed. It doesn't mean that it's allowed if you have a good excuse for it. It says it's not allowed. Mr. Brandeck. 
The focus of that decision was the prevention of the commercial landscape business, not the operation of the nursery. Can I ask you this, Joe? Uh, where does this stand in terms of the, the uh, planning board uh, process? And, and have they had hearings before the planning board? They've had several hearings. Um, they, were these formal adjudicatory hearings before the planning board regarding Thayer's intention to use the property and use it for commercial I've, landscaping? I've, I've only been to one, and one that I was invited to. Um, and I went to that hearing at the request of a planning board member. Uh, they wanted some explanation, some some insight as to what the history of the, the Thay Nursery property is, has been. Uh, and I gave that, and then I submitted a, um, almost like a transcript of, of, of what I presented, uh, along with some recommendations. Should a special permit issue, I've suggested some conditions uh, on the special permit. So the board has taken that into consideration. I did have a conversation with Alex Whiteside and Emily Ennis they they are hopeful to have a special permit if one issues to have it done by well there's there's they're hopeful to have the hearings done by june of this year whether a special permit issues or not i i think that's their goal um, and it is is the general aim of the special permit that's being sought to operate a landscaping business at the thea nursery site that that is the aim. That of that's the, what it that's what it really is under the, the warrant article. Um, and so, if they if they don't issue the special permit in in June to allow that particular activity on the premises, then presumably the many cases that have been filed here uh, would be pursued in the superior court if you can never get a judge to to hear all these cases. On the other hand, if the planning board allowed this particular use and regulated the landscaping aspect of the use, then do, in your opinion, are all of the previous Board of Appeals decisions and special permits uh, considered moot? And then the applicants would have an appeal uh, to the Superior Court, presumably to see whether the a warrant article is lawful or not. And That's then, already in land court. Yeah. Okay. And then secondly, um, whether the uh, decision of the uh, planning board uh, allowing the landscaping use with conditions is in, in uh, full conformity with the, the legislation that was passed by town meeting. I, I, well, is I, that right? I, I'm and, with, and th then the... the, the uh, decisions of the Board of Appeal would be moot. I, I think that that's a strong possibility, yes. Okay. Um, so so the right now, Mr. Joe Henning has told us, is a challenge to the validity of the uh, legislation or, or the act uh, pending in the land court. And how long has that been pending in the land court, Mr. Joe Henning? We're, we're going to summary judgment in May. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Uh, before whom is the... Uh, Judge Shire. Shire. Oh, the, the chief, chief judge of the land court. Okay, it, so that's summary, pardon me? I'm sorry, if I'm not mistaken, though, one challenge to the legality of the bylaw that passed town meeting has already been denied by the court, if I'm not mistaken. No. You are, well, I don't know. Uh, all the, <laughs> the, 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 town, <laughs> the town and the old fields and, and, and us have all agreed to go to summary judgment. Okay, great. So that's in where May. that is. And that uh, will move forward in May, or uh, the arguments are in May, and then I think it will happen in June. Okay. And then if the planning board issues a special permit allowing the construction uh, strike at the landscaping business on the premises uh, with conditions, then that would likewise, likewise be appealed to the land court, presumably. It will be yes. appealed. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think under the land court procedures, that would go to Judge Shire as well, because she has the, the principal case. Okay. Um, I think that's somewhat helpful. Do you have anything you want to... I, I would just like to add uh, uh, the, the um, issue of the drainage. Um, that, that is also before the planning board. And one of my recommendations uh, to the planning board is that 
is that if they were, are to move forward with that special permit, then one condition should be that they, that the, the drainage issue be reviewed by an engineer and, and a system designed to do what can be done with drainage, knowing that some of it is natural drainage. Some of it's going to be there, whether Thayer's there or not. But any system be designed by an engineer and monitored, the installation of that system monitored by an engineer so that the final system, someone, an, an engineer that specializes or knows about drainage designs a system, but not just designs it and says, okay, here you go, put that in, that that engineer be present for the construction of the drainage system, whatever that may be. So, and to uh, monitor the performance of the system. Uh, I didn't go that far, but, oh. but possibly. Um, we, we, if, if, if the drainage system did not work as designed, we, I suppose we could say, okay, Mr. Engineer, come back and, and, and tell us why it's not working, if that's the case. But hopefully, um, hopefully uh, they'll design it well enough that, that there won't be that problem. Okay. I, I guess... Any other questions of Mr. Prindeck? Um Just one comment, maybe a question. Um, do you agree that God didn't make the land um, over at there the way it is today, that that construction yard was not built by God, that that was man-made over the years? <laughs> You know, this is why we've got I, drainage I understand, problems. I understand that there has been there for 40 years, but I think the natural topography of the land and the area is what it is, and it, it has not changed. Well, okay, I, we'll agree to disagree. Okay. <laughs> we need I a guess, hydrologist to get to the I, bottom of that. Well, we Mr. have Johan one. And go ahead. Um, I, I don't understand this thing about the quarter cord. I recall, Mr. Leonard, that when uh, the decision was made by the Board of Appeals, that what was specified was that it must be loaded into, let's say, a private vehicle by hand. That uh, mechanized uh, loading of, of firewood was not permitted. Uh, it, you know, I, I believe that's in the decision, that, and, and, and you, you articulated it, that um, it, it had to be done by hand. A quarter of a quart of wood is a heck of a lot to load by hand. Um, so I, I don't know where that came from exactly, but we were talking uh, in that decision about cash and carry, and it had to be loaded by hand. Um, and if I could just add, I think perhaps you made the analogy to going to Stop and Shop where they have the bundles of wood out front. Um, yes, they're wrapped I believe in plastic. They give you yes, a little handle. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I charge you too much money for I, I guess, so you know, little boy. I think you're the one that said it. In my mind, this is what I think cash and carry is. Okay. Let me... Uh, I, I, I guess I have some additional questions. Uh, the um, the uh, Coulter case, um, Mr. Prondek has, has disagreed with me over some period of time, but what Coulter did, what Judge Sands did in the Coulter case was he reviewed... What do the uh, Milton zoning bylaws mean? That's what he was looking at. He, and it, it had nothing to do with uh, a special permit that expired. What Judge Sands said clearly was that the, the Milton zoning bylaws do not permit more than one commercial vehicle on a site that is garaged unless there's a zoning variance. So what he's saying is that you cannot, by special permit, grant such a thing. That's what, that's what it, it seems to me he clearly says, if you read the opinion. So I, I, um, I, I do not agree that there was any, and I don't recall reading in his decision that a, a, a special permit had expired. Um, you know, and, and if you can't allow by special permit an activity, then, um, uh, it, it isn't allowed <laughs> until the variance occurs. You know, uh, uh, I, I think uh, the other thing that I, I was perturbed by was that, um, you know, the thing about the, the, the lawn care van is not about the lawn care van itself, but it's to limit the number of vehicles on the property and to try to reduce the amount of traffic and the amount of noise that, that comes from the location. And so, um, for Joe to go over and say, oh, let me help you with that, why don't we remove the decals, is, is trying to get away from what we're trying to do there. For Joe to go over and, and say, let me help you with that, that never occurred. Let's be clear on the record. That never occurred. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Lennon. Okay, that's, that's fine. Mr. Johnny. That's all I have to say. Okay. Let me uh, see if my colleagues have any questions of Mr. Prondack. Uh, Mrs. King, do you have any questions of Mr. Prondack? Well, we were talking about piles of stone dust and the like. Um, and I don't know if you're the right person to ask or not, but um, how is that used not in landscaping? How is that used in a nursery? Should it be there at all? Sure. When, when you, I mean, they have to have an area, for, for example, they don't have pavement. So when you have an area that's where you, where you load and unload trucks, for example, when Thayer goes and picks up trees or when they deliver trees, you have to have a, uh, you, can't, you can't park the trucks on uh, loam. They have to, it has to be on a stable. So that's what the stone dust uh, is capable of doing. Without paving, it creates a hard, harder surface than soft soil. So is this something that's so put down temporarily? I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, no, I'm no, ignorant no, no, on this. But it can be a permanent in lieu of asphalt. So why would it be in a pile rather than in lieu of asphalt? In my opinion, flat? and perhaps the old fields could answer it better, but in my opinion, so they took an area that was used for loading and storage of materials. They took that away. They took up the stone dust so they could make it a planting area uh -huh. directly behind the 23 Parkwood Drive. So this, this pile only appeared after they moved that area? They took, scraped up all the stone dust, put down soil that roots could penetrate, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, and made that a, a tree area. So they've taken that pile and put it over here. Now in my, I, I guess what they're doing is deciding the final layout. I see. It's, it's awaiting this whole thing with so the planning board. So if they say, okay, the, the, now the new loading area will be over here, they can then take that pile and spread it over here so that... So where is the loading of those trees going on now? How is that working, I guess? I, 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 I don't go up to Thayer Nursery yeah. enough to know the entire everyday operation. That would have to be answered by... Um, so what, what's the plan for the stone dust, I guess, is my question. Sure, why don't you come up here, Mr. Oldfield, if you want to be heard. 24 Forest Street, Milton. So Good, welcome to the Board of Appeals. Thank Mr. you. We listened to our abutters, and part of their complaint was noise and dust. So we were proactive and we removed an area that previously was used for parking of equipment. That, and that created the pile, is that correct? Correct. Okay. So we excavated out 10,000 square feet of space. So I don't know what size your property is at your house, just so you can Good make it really good. Good deal smaller than that. So <laughs> just, that just puts it into perspective, the size of the space probably twice the size of your green space on your lawn. So we needed to generate 12 inches of suitable soil to grow plant material mm -hmm. into. So knowing and listening to our neighbors, we said, let's create, let's move these things that are causing them grievance, dig them out, amend the soil, put the new evergreens in place to create a greater setback technically from their residence. Now we're at approximately 75 feet from their property line and 150 feet from their house. And let's stockpile it because we know we're going to use it based on what the application and the planning board has agreed that they want our land care yard. They've agreed that they want the land care yard in a certain area that was a previous <coughs> area, which is behind my house. So you're just waiting for whatever the plan is going to be, and then yes, that's going to be put back into exactly. flatness. So okay. the same process is going to have to happen in the reverse. Gotcha in order to do. So now we're going to have to come in and dig out good soil, put down the dense grade gravel for our, for our base or our macadam for our land care facility, so where the unloading occurs. So there's going to be one area allocated for delivery. Okay, so it's, it's temporary even though it's been a while. Correct. Okay, thank you. 
Mr. Alves, do you have any? I, I do. I, I guess questions? I want to bring us back to why we're here tonight, because if I. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, let me let me do one thing. Sure. Excuse me. Um, are you going to stay there for a few minutes, Mr. Uh, yes, I just can I say one more thing regarding the quantity just to yes, please When you go a pro, There's approximately 400 pieces of wood in a cord So that's three cords is 1200 pieces and If the average person buys a bundle of 10 or 12 pieces say 10 for so we have the ability to service what? 40 people. 40 people. Yeah. So that puts it in, it takes a, a volume of wood, a cord that is not recognizable to the general public and, and allows you to make a correlation to how many customers that serves. I just want to ask you two questions and I'm, I'm going to preface my questions to, to be fair with you. Here. Sure. Uh, because uh, they're really not the direct subject of this mm. hearing. Okay. Correct. We, this hearing is dealing with uh, firewood and it's dealing with uh, commercial. commercial vehicles. Right. Those are the two issues. Uh, but we've, we've been shown a photograph here uh, with a Driscoll truck you know, on the premises and the, the claim is that uh, it was being filled with mulch to be used for uh, Driscoll landscaping business. Is that activity taking place on site? Um, what we're doing and what we've done with